Have you ever found yourself lost in the labyrinth of OBS settings and menus, wondering if there's more to this powerhouse than meets the eye? OBS has to be the premier tool to get streamers online, but let's face it, the interface ain't that friendly. If you've stumbled across this video, then congratulations, you're about to up your streaming game. My name's Danny and I stream over on twitch.tv slash dannybowls. Now, if you're anything like me, you've probably caught yourself wondering at some point, am I making the most of OBS? What can it do that I don't know about? Is there a YouTube video out there somewhere that can show me more cool things about OBS featuring a ridiculously handsome long-haired gentleman? Well, I have for you not one, not two, but nine things that OBS can do that you probably didn't know about. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future tips and tricks because I'm putting out videos like this all the time. And if you press that like button, it made me a very happy YouTuber. So let's kick things off with a little feature that is really, really handy for pixel perfect placement of sources. This is preview scaling. Now by default, your preview scaling is gonna be set to scale to window. But if we set this to canvas instead, it can be super useful. Over in OBS, we can right click some blank space, go to preview scaling, and we'll set this to canvas. When we do it sort of punches in, this is to let you know you're now in canvas mode. So if we hold down the space bar, you'll notice that the cursor goes from a pointer to a hand. This means that now when we scroll up and down with our mouse wheel, we're zooming in and out of the canvas. You can also hold left click to drag around and see different parts of the canvas as you need to. What we're gonna do here though is zoom out a little bit and show a real world example of how you might use this. So I'm gonna right click down here. I'm gonna add a source. I'm gonna add the scene of my webcam reference scene. Once we press okay, we're gonna drag our webcam beneath the webcam frame. And at this point, to put your webcam in the webcam frame, what a lot of people would do is they'd sort of put it in approximately the right position and then just sort of resize and just, just kind of eyeball it, see, you know, see what works, see what doesn't work and just aim as best they can. A better way of doing this would be to use the canvas preview scaling mode. So I'm gonna hold the space bar and just scroll in a little bit. And then I'm gonna resize myself to something like that. And then holding the Alt key on my keyboard, I can trim the source so I'm fitting exactly within the webcam frame. Once we've resized and cropped according to our needs, what we can do is turn off our gameplay scene here and you'll see if we look around the edges very, very closely, there's no bleed over, there's no spill. My webcam is fitting precisely within the webcam frame. As you can see, using the canvas scaling mode is incredibly helpful for when you need to put something in just the right position or crop really precisely. For feature number two, we have nested scenes. When used effectively, nested scenes can be great for keeping things nice and clean inside of your OBS in terms of scene and source management. But also, it can really help speed up editing sources that you'd want to change frequently. This could be alerts, overlays, or webcams, just to name a few. So let's say you wanted to have a supporter bar appear on every single scene in your OBS. A supporter bar are typically a graphic such as this, uh, along with different text sources which explain what the different elements are. So here we have our latest subscriber, our highest bits, and our highest donation. Without nested scenes, what you typically do is you'd copy these sources and then you go onto every scene where you want them and paste them in manually like so. And of course, if ever you wanted to change them, you need to go into every single scene individually and update them all. It's a real pain. Instead, a better way of doing this would be to use a nested scene. So if we create a dedicated scene for our supporter bar and keep all our sources in here, edited and appearing exactly as we want them, when we want these to appear in other scenes, we simply have to nest the scene. So to do that, we would go into a scene where we'd want the supporter bar to appear. Then we can add a new source and add a scene. Scroll down on the list and we're gonna pick our reference scene of supporter bar, press okay, and there it is. If we want that to appear on other scenes, we simply have to copy it and paste it. And then for any change we want to make, let's say we wanna change some text or change the color or whatever we want to do. I'm gonna take this highest donation here and say, let's make it, uh, let's make it pink. Now, wherever that nested scene appears, the change is automatically visible. So you don't need to go into scenes anymore individually, one by one, updating all your sources. Next up is something that's really handy for creating social media content, as well as creating highlight videos. This is the replay buffer. Using this, at the push of a button, you can save the last however many seconds of your stream onto your computer as a video. Think of this much like creating a clip on Twitch, only you don't have to specify a title or pick out the start and the end of your clip manually. You just need to go into settings, output, replay buffer, and press enable replay buffer. Depending how much RAM you have, I'd say set this to about two minutes. If you have more RAM, you can set it higher. If you have less RAM, set it less. Take it from me. It's so frustrating when you go through your recordings later, only to find that you've missed off the beginning of some clutch gameplay moment. So if you can, set this higher. We're gonna set it here to 120 seconds, and then we'll press apply. We then need to go into our hotkeys, and then we're gonna search for replay. 
I'm gonna set the save replay to a combination we're not gonna hit accidentally. So I find Control, Alt, Shift, and then another button works pretty well. So here we'll set it to Control, Alt, Shift, and equals. Of course, we'll want to make sure that our replay buffer is always running when we're streaming. So to do that, we can press apply, go over to general, and then here we have automatically start replay buffer when streaming. So we can tick this box, press apply. Now, whenever you're live, your replay buffer is running. This next feature is a godsend for anyone who makes content out of their stream recordings. This is remuxing. Now let's say you have a bunch of stream recordings. It could be full streams or it could just be clips from your replay buffer. And you go to edit it in your favorite video editing software and you find out that MKB files aren't supported. But what are you gonna do? Go into OBS and press Remux Recordings. Rather than hunting down some obscure MKB plugin for your video editing software, or uploading your entire recording to some sketchy online conversion service, we can use OBS to remux your recording from MKV into MP4. Simply go into File, Remux Recordings, and then pressing this button here, you can select one or multiple files. So here I'm gonna go in and select a few different clips I've got all in MKV format. We press Open, and they'll be added to the list. Once we press Remux, it's gonna convert all these files into MP4. If you wanted to as well, you can set it so that OBS will automatically remux any recording it makes. So to do this, we can press OK and close, and then we'll go into our settings. We then go into Advanced, and here we can simply click Remux to MP4 and press Apply. This will work both for entire stream recordings and any recordings made from your replay buffer. Now you may be thinking to yourself, but Danny, I record directly to MP4. I don't use MKVs. What's the point of all this? Well, if your recording is MP4 and OBS decides to crash, or there's a power cut, or your PC restarts for some unknown reason, your entire video file will be corrupted and unusable. Whereas, if you're using MKV instead, and for some reason OBS stops recording, you'll still have the entire recording of that video up until that point. Everything will be preserved, and you won't be losing any more content. Next is something that isn't exactly a secret, but it's definitely underutilized. I'm of course talking about Studio Mode. Studio Mode allows you to make changes to scenes and sources in OBS and preview them without navigating away from the scene you're currently broadcasting. When done well, this can really improve the production quality of your stream. There are lots of reasons you might want to do this, such as adding a new source to the scene you're currently broadcasting, without showing your audience the whole, add new browser source, set the URL, set the width and the height, place it where you want, make sure it all works correctly, it's a whole ugly mess. Alternatively, you might be playing a new game for the very first time and want to make sure that game is being captured correctly by OBS before switching to your gaming scene. If we go down to the Studio Mode button down here in the bottom right, we can press here, and you'll see that OBS will split itself in two. This view here on the right is the scene that is currently being broadcast, and on the left is the preview pane for any edits you want to make. Let's say, for instance, we want to show who's currently speaking in Discord at this moment in time. It's a really cool browser source, I'll share it in the description. If we go ahead and right click, and go to Add Browser Source, and we'll call it Discord. We then set our URL, along with our width and our height, and then press OK. Once we do, you'll notice that everything up here on the right just looks normal, looks the same as it did before. Over here on the left though, we've got a Danny above me. This is me sat in my own Discord voice channel right now, and it's not being broadcast to my audience, or at least it wouldn't if I was currently live. In order to show this source on our stream, we simply need to press one of these transition buttons here. So transition is your default transition, or you can use a quick transition, such as a cut, a fade, or a fade to black, and then when you press that a second time, it'll fade back into the content. We'll just press the ordinary transition here, and you'll see that now, Danny appears live. As I said in the last section, studio mode is well known, but just not really well used. One thing you probably haven't heard of though, is multi-view. You can basically think of multi-view like studio mode, but the next level of, it's studio mode on steroids. To enable multi-view, you simply need to go into view, and then you can choose either full screen or windowed. I'm just gonna grab this quickly and drag it over here. And if you are using a single monitor or using it in windowed mode, one thing I would definitely recommend is right clicking it and pressing always on top. Now, if you don't currently have studio mode enabled, clicking on one of these different scenes here will switch to it immediately. However, if you have studio mode enabled, you can then pick a scene, edit it as you need, and then press your transition button to switch to that scene. One of the great things about multi-view, besides having live previews of multiple scenes in front of you at all times, is this here. These little safe areas. These give you a representation of what your stream would look like on different devices using different aspect ratios. When you're placing content on your stream, using these is a great way of making sure you're not cutting off important content. Unfortunately, at the time of recording, there is no means of choosing what eight scenes appear below us. It's just the first eight scenes that OBS sees. One way we can get around this though is to set a different display type. So if I close this off 
and we go down into the settings. Under the general section, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we have the multi-view options. So I can change the multi-view layout to one of a variety. I find what works for me quite well is horizontal top 18 scenes. So if we click into this and press OK, once I relaunch multi-view, I shall show you what that looks like. I'll then drag that into the recording preview and just resize it for you. And you can see we have many, many more options available to us in terms of what scenes we can see. So now it's the first 18 in our OBS list. Next up is something that I personally use quite a lot as someone who both streams and creates content for TikTok and YouTube. This is profiles and scene collections. In a nutshell, a profile is a collection of your settings. This is your streaming settings, including what service you're connected to, your recording location, your bitrate, etc. One thing that a profile doesn't include though is your scenes and sources. These instead are saved in the scene collection. One way you might use profiles in the scene collections is if you stream to multiple platforms. Perhaps you want to have different settings, different scenes, different sources, depending on where you're streaming to. Or alternatively, maybe stream from a laptop. And when you're at home, you want to use a high bitrate profile. And when you're on the go, use a low bitrate profile. To see your different profiles, you can simply go up to the menu bar here and press profile. The one you're currently using is probably called Untitled, but we can rename it here by pressing rename and give it a nicer name if we wanted to. A word of advice though, if you did want to use multiple profiles, it's much, much quicker to make a duplicate of an existing profile rather than creating a brand new one from scratch. To duplicate your existing profile, you simply need to go into profile and press duplicate. To change a profile, you simply need to open up the profile menu and then choose a profile that you're interested in using. For your scene collections, it's much the same process. You simply need to click into scene collection and then you can duplicate as needed or rename. And if you want to switch to a different scene collection, you can simply press the name of the one you want. One thing that's definitely worth doing though is backing up your profiles and your scene collections about every six to eight weeks. This is just in case you make a change somewhere down the line and you need to revert it later on. To do this, we can go into profile and then press export. You then simply need to pick a location in which to back up all of your profiles. Once you press select folder, individual subfolders for each of your profiles will be created. Sadly, for scene collections, you have to back up each of your collections one by one. To do this, simply go into scene collection and then press export. Pick the folder you want to save your scene collection to and then press save. Then simply repeat the process for each of your scene collections. There is potentially a better way of doing backups though. And that is portable mode. Now I mentioned this during my Ultimate OBS setup guide, but using the portable version of OBS instead of the full installer makes backing up super, super simple. If you're anything like me, you've updated OBS at some point in the past and gone, oh no, it's broken something. And then you've got to find the older version, reinstall it, make sure your plugin's working. It's a real pain. Instead, if you use the portable version of OBS, when you want to back up, you just back up the entire OBS directory. No more hunting around the file system for all the different locations that OBS likes to save things. Head on over to obsproject.com. Then once the page loads up, we're gonna hit this download button here and then scroll down a little bit and press download zip. Once it's extracted where you want it, simply go into bin, 64 bit, and then we can right click OBS and we want to press create shortcut. Then we can go down to our shortcut, right click it and press properties. Once this window opens up here, we're gonna to go to the target. And we're gonna go all the way to the end, add a space and type in dash dash portable. Once you open up the portable version for the first time, you'll see this auto configuration wizard, but actually we're gonna go ahead and press cancel on this. The reason being, we're gonna import our profiles and our scenes from the backup we just made. One thing to note though, is if you backed up your profiles and your scene collections with just the name untitled, you might have issues importing it here. So to get around that, we can go into profile and we'll rename the existing profile to just old and do the exact same thing for the scene collections. So go in here, press rename and just call it old. You'll see up in the top here, our profile is set to old and our scenes set to old. Then we just need to import. So we can press profile and press import. And then we just select the directory we backed up our profile to a moment ago. So here I'm gonna press select folder and you see the profile up here is still set to old. So we'll go into profile and then select untitled. You'll notice that OBS has changed its layout in order to reflect the changes we have in our old profile, but it doesn't have any scenes. Let's go into our scene collections and import. So go up here, press import and you'll get this prompt appear asking if you want to automatically detect any existing scene collections. We're gonna press no though, because we're gonna select our scenes manually. Simply click this ellipsis here and we'll select our backups. Here I'm choosing untitled.json and once I press open and then press import, it'll add that scene collection to OBS. Once we go to scene collection and then press untitled, everything is back to normal and OBS Portable now has the exact same settings and scenes as your full installation of OBS. Finally, a little extra visual source for those who want to make their webcam look a bit more high-end is lookup tables or LUTs. A lookup table basically tells OBS, right, 
When you see these values for red, green, and blue, use these different values instead. Think of it much like color grading when you're video editing or applying filters on Instagram. There are all sorts of creative ways you can use LUTs. You can apply one that mutes the colors to give your webcam a bit more of a retro aesthetic. You can emphasize the greens to make it look like you're being viewed through night vision goggles. Or maybe come Halloween time, you use a LUT that emphasizes the darker tones. To use a LUT, simply right click the scene or source you want to apply it to. So here I'm gonna pick my recording webcam, right click, go to filters, and then under the effect filters, we're gonna press the plus button here and press apply LUT. Give it a name that makes sense and then press OK. Once you do so, you can then press browse and pick the LUT you want to use. As you'll see, OBS comes with a few LUTs to get you started with, so we're going to select this red isolated one for a cool kind of Sin City vibe. Once you press open, as you'll see here, that LUT takes effect immediately. Now there's nothing stopping you from going to Google and typing in free OBS LUT pack, and you get loads of good results, but for safety's sake, I'll say stick to the OBS forums. And that is 9 things that OBS can do that frankly don't get enough love. Let me know in the comments if you're doing any of these already, and I am planning on doing a follow-up video, so let me know your own OBS tips in the comments. Who knows, you might even get a little shout out in the next video. If you found any of these tips helpful at all, please do consider leaving a like. It helps way more than you'd think. And if you want to watch another video, right here. I've been Danny, I'll catch you on the next one.